I met Jade 10 years ago. We both worked at this bowling place. She was a barmaid and I was, I was a shoe boy. They always say that you're gonna remember the first place you work. That place was a real dive. The boss was a dick and nothing worked. She was the only thing that made it bearable. She was always there and we, we always used to spend evenings with each other at the end of our shifts just having a drink. And it was... And she would tell me about her course at university. She did law. And I, I, you know, I pretended to know what she was talking about, if I'm honest. I was just more happy just to be in her company. And she would just tell me all about it. And I, I hadn't met many people who had like a drive. I was just happy to be with her, just to listen to her and just to hear someone who's got a bit more ambition beyond the bowling place, you know. We'd start spending like more time with each other and we'd play this arcade game. Uh, <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a good bit of fun. She, she's quite competitive. She'd always be pushing to get to the top score. And I, I, I liked the competition, I it was fun, so I, I'd always try and push myself too. But you know, after a while I was just more just happy to be with her, it was, it was just nice and she'd always end up getting the top score anyway, so... <laughs> then she quit. She did the right thing. She She... She was clearly a lot better than that place. I didn't get to hear as much from her, but I was happy that she quit. But I eventually quit. I found a new job, and uh, some of the people I was working with were going to a house party. And I thought, you know what? I've, I've not been out for a while. Go and have a good time. And she was there. <laughs> Instantly, straight to competition, got a line of shots there and we're just gulping him down. It was a really great night and next thing I knew it was a really great morning. <laughs> I knew that she was the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And we got married a few years later. It was our third year anniversary. We really wanted to get out of the city. We've been working non-stop. I found this, this perfect lake. It was one of those picture-perfect kind of days. The sky was just as blue as you could hope. She'd always told me about her family going for picnics. And personally, I, it wasn't the kind of thing I'd be interested in. But I was doing it for her. I got all the kind of things that she loves. The desserts that she loves, the right fillings and all the sandwiches. She was so happy. And then, she, she felt this like jolt of pain. She just screeched and we immediately looked at it and there was this little red dot, just a small, little red dot. She was fine. She seemed okay and she said she was okay so, so, so we just carried on. We, we went for a hike and we went home that later that night and everything was fine. It was the next day I, 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 I just I, the screech that she, she just she was in so much pain and she's screeching. She's screaming she's in so much pain. The bed it's just soaked. And yeah, it's, you, you can feel that, that she's been writhing there for a while. That, that, that pain is... That, that pain so, so close. And, and she just kept screeching and... I was there for her. I, 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 she, she, she didn't want to leave the room. I made sure that she had everything she could eat, could drink. I looked after her, but that noise... That noise, I... We called a doctor, and the doctor, doctor said it was a bug bite. That made the most sense to me. 
and she, she, they said that, that as long as it doesn't swell up too much, it should be okay. I, I, uh, he didn't hear all the screaming because she, she just kept screeching. She's const, constantly screeching. The the bite it was it, it was becoming redder. It felt, it felt brittle. It didn't, it didn't feel like her, but she was screeching, so it didn't matter. I, I was looking after her. I, I, it didn't matter what it felt like. I just wanted to make sure she was okay. And then one morning, I, there was no more screeching. I woke up and she just looked so tranquil. So calm, so so relaxed. So so immediately, I, I look, I looked at the, the the bite, and I looked at that spot, the blistered redness that had become, gristled and just it's something you don't want to touch. It there's something inside it growing and, uh, and moving and she's just tranquil she's just calm that these things crawling in inside of her skin the, the redness had become almost see-through you, you could see these things these, these little creatures wriggling and writhing around in her skin. She found it cute. Cute. Creatures inside her, she found it cute. And I'd lie there next to her and I could hear them wriggling writhing inside her, sliding in between. It sounded like there were more and more of these things each day. Maggots, but, but not maggots. I wanted to call a doctor. I wanted to get some, some other perspective on this. And she wouldn't let me. I, I, I tried to get on the computer and find any sort of research and she did not want any, any interference. I, I, I'd hear her talking to them in the other room. I could hear her whispering to them as if we have a bright future. Ah. And all I can hear is just the sound of them writhing. She just still wanted the closeness. She wanted me to understand and, and love these, these parasites, these, these, these vicious little creatures. The, 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 it felt like they were everywhere. And all I can hear is just the sound of them writhing. Writhing in, in, and turning her skin into this rotten... It was so smooth and, and beautiful to the touch before and now I, I can't look at it. Uh, what, what do you do? Ah. I can't love those things. I know she wants me to. I know she wants me to. I know that she thinks she can have some sort of connection with them, but I, I, I can't. I can't have a connection with some thing writhing inside of her. They're slowly taking her. They've taken her. They, they dominate her every thought. It just gets worse and worse every day. Every day. And I know she's in pain. She won't admit it. But I can see every time she moves, she winces in little, little, little moments of pain. She's, she doesn't seem, she's, she thinks she's stuck in bed. She's not stuck in bed. She can't move. Her skin begins to rip. And she's fine. She just spends time with these things. 
She sings to him, she speaks to him. And she wants me to rub cream on, on them. I, I rub the cream, I, I can feel him wriggling. And she moans in pleasure like anyone would. But it feels like they're enjoying it. It feels like the closer I give her any sort of closeness or attention, that these things are experiencing something similar. I... <laughs> what are you supposed to do? <sighs> she... She tried to get intimate. How, how can you get intimate with, with, with those things? They, they, they spread, they've infested across her skin, all across her. I can see them every inch of her. And she was so beautiful. She, she, she is beautiful, she's my wife, but... but They're winning. They're taking her. I... <sighs> they're creating a nest. I know they're creating a nest. And it's gonna burst out of her. These things are going to spread everywhere. I, 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 I can't let that happen. She wouldn't want me to let that happen. She would want me to do the right thing. If it was in the same situation, she would do the right thing. These, these monsters, going to eat her and take her over and she will be nothing but not my wife I can't stand by and do that to her I can't stand by and just let these things win I will always love my wife that never goes away but I know I have to do the right thing. I know. I'll always love her. And, and that's not going to change. But they don't win. <laughs>